one for. Okay, let's get into it. Where were we at? More importantly, what did I do off screen? So, I actually had a pretty major bug, and I did the refactor. Um, we hit an issue where. Well, actually, actually, we didn't hit an issue, we hit a dead end. Um, it was getting particularly difficult to add the last piece of functionality I needed, uh, which is the inter cluster routing stuff. And I decided to commit that, then roll back one patch and branch off again uh, and refactor the main loop just to make things a bit cleaner. Which I'm looking at that, not that. In fact, I could probably move the camera now that I think about it, but we'll worry about that later. Um, so we were in the middle of a refactor. Um, and I probably should probably show you what, hap what happened with that. But I refactored and broke a whole lot of functionality because it turns out my test suite is not nearly as comprehensive as I thought. I've actually only got one test that tests anything IO related. And uh, that is the code that interfaces with Python DNS. So I do a couple of DNS lookups and it turned out that I broke IO related code and I'll show you why. So if I go to the main loop, um, this bit here is new. Uh, the syscall handlers, before it looked a lot like this with the task sleep and the task receive and everything. Um, but I moved all of the I.O. out to separate functions, as you can see here. This just made them a bit more streamlined because most of the code was copied and pasted and repeated several times. Um, didn't really need to be done, it just makes the main code a bit more, a bit easier to navigate. And I was having a lot of trouble because I was bouncing around all throughout the, the code uh, when I was fixing things. And I want the scheduler code to be worried about just scheduling stuff. Um, especially since this IO code is, I wouldn't say pretty solid. Um, it doesn't really need to be in line, it's pretty predictable. Apart from one or two cases specifically around connect, you can see it follow, so connect, uh, you can see it follows pretty specific patterns. And in fact, I've got an additional space there which I need to fix up. So we pulled that out. Uh, that made the main function a bit tinier. Um, and I think the goal of today is just to try and clean up the main loop more and more. There's uh, one thing in particular I did want to get to. So the first one was get the syscall stuff out there. The second one is to simplify the scheduling code and also make scheduling a new task a single function call. Because currently we schedule new tasks in two places. <coughs> Sorry, that's on thread create, uh, on entry into the main loop, where we've got the initial setup processes, and also on the task send. So if we send a message to a task that does not exist, we end up spawning a uh, new task. Um, and the problem is the code was very, very, you had to remember to get the code in sync and up to date. And there's some differences between the two, but for the actual scheduling and new process, that's pretty predictable and the same each time. Now, there were, were probably about another two, another two locations where we wanted to actually schedule tasks as well. Uh, and that is intra-cluster messaging, uh, so when a new message comes into the cluster. And I think there was another case as well. And so we were going to eventually end up with four sites where we call the new process. And at that point, we really do want to refactor everything out. You know, so that's the, that's the focus for today. Simplify the main loop, make it easy to refactor, and get into a position where we can implement this uh, in between internode messaging in a way that uh, is simple. So that's going to also include simplifying some of the constructs in, internally, because we've got entity addresses, entities, entity instances and tasks and they're all interrelated in various ways um, and became very very difficult to reason about those you know, uh, inside the main loop and because I've got details of the internal implementation sometimes I injected the wrong thing into the main loop and that would cause me nightmares to try and be one. Um, if you're writing code it should be less than because there should only be one or two imports, which I guess the external imports, external imports, uh, and not any of the internal I think we'll focus on that. 
So I think that's probably about the fourth one. So that's let's actually just die when we get some pain usually. Um bum 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 bum. bum. So first things first, we've got to make sure the code actually runs. Because I've got no idea what, what I left this code in, uh, what state I left this code in when I was reading it like three in the morning. So here's the last commit. I'm in line of IO based systems. Okay. So I'm fairly confident this is actually going to work, but let's just test to confirm. Um, this will take about three or four seconds, maybe longer. I'd love to paralyze this, but it actually makes it slower, would you believe? Um, the overhead in going multi-process and multi-machine for the test suite is quite significant with my test, which I find really, really irritating. So, do I fix that camera? No, I don't think we're going to have to look at it. <laughs> okay, so the code works. We're set to 107 tests, so I do need more IO-based coverage, but at this point, I'm not going to worry about that. I've got at least one litmus test or canary in the mine, which is the DMS test. Um, so that should be sufficient for the moment. But I might add it to our to-do items. In fact, this would be a good chance to check our to-do items. Uh, Monday. So I think we're currently Wednesday, and that'll be the 15th. 2021. Let's cut that. Uh, more IO based coverage. Uh, refactor IO loop. And what are we doing in our refactor? Well, first we're removing remove more syscalls from inlined. And the second one, I've already forgotten. We were. Wow, I mean, I just talked about it and I've completely forgotten already. Ah, oh, yes. Um, single call site for scheduling new processes. Now, what is likely going to happen is because currently our main loop is just a single function, um, we are very, very likely going to turn this into a class and then move all these IO things onto the class itself, um, as well as things dot schedule, and then make the tasks, for example, a and the running tasks and everything, uh, self.running tasks, so actually um, uh, an attribute of the class. Um, I don't know when we'll get to that. I, we could start with that, or we could leave it to later, and I think we may end up starting with that because it's kind of a prerequisite for refactoring the schedule stuff. Because otherwise we actually have to pass hold of this stuff into the schedule function. Um, such as tasks, wonderful tasks and everything. That just feels a bit ugly. That, that's a bit of an implementation detail, but we're hoping to make... It shouldn't be explicit, but it should be implicit as part of the schedule itself. Like, you shouldn't have to... If you're passing all that stuff in, you may, it, may as well just schedule it later on. <laughs> Uh, so let's take a look first. <coughs> well, actually, let's do we get rid of more syscalls or do we do schedule? I think we'll get rid of more syscalls first. So I want to at least give it a glance and get an idea of the scope. So I've got task sleep, task receive, and task send. Task sleep has to stay there, even though it's a no op. Um, otherwise, we fall through to the else. And if we fall through to the else, we just log that as an error and crash the task explicitly. In fact, this should be a new, no QA as well. Uh, no QA. Actually, before we do that, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So I'm just going to bookmark that. Uh, no QA. Okay, right, so I can just do a no QA on that. And then if I go no, no. There we go, that's what I wanted.
And in fact, I think that's a security thing as well. We can actually check that with make and it. Yes, yes it is. Did I save that? Yes it did. No QA. So do I do no security? Let's just quickly jump over to uh, Bandit Python. No check. I need the docs. So. Kind of glad that Stack Overflow was not the first result returned there. Like Stack Overflow is a great place to start. I'll give it that. It's not a great place to end up. With a few exceptions, I've been doing some work in assembly and SIMD, uh, and there's actually some gems in there. Um, but even then, I don't think the set code. It's like, oh, that's a good way to do it. But I'm going to get rid of all that ugly and use this code soon. No second. So, just here. Yeah. No second. Now I've got a couple of sites that are just try try accept catches. And we're not going to eliminate them because in the context of this code, it's actually exactly what we want. If anything, it would be a security issue to not catch anything, uh, which is a bit counterintuitive. But we can explicitly mark those with the uh, the no sec flag that I just added here. On this side. And that that'll just mean in our particular con context that we've audited that ourselves. So ah, let's unbookmark that. So what do we do? Try accept. In fact, is that actually even correct? And I've got two sites, so I need to do a QA here. And then no sec. Uh, luckily, we can ignore the exceptions here, the no sec or no QA. So on a regular basis, we can go through and audit it, but that's more of a manual process. Um, well, I suppose I could automate that, but I don't have a build pipeline set up currently, so... When I do have a proper QA service that's building everything, uh, it'll probably be a good idea to have once a month in a regularly automated schedule that just takes the last working head and uh, runs it again, a, no um, a pass that ignores a no second no QA and just make sure everything's good, but once again, down the track. So, checkpoints. And get name. Okay, they kind of have to live in mind. Checkpoint especially. Okay, uh, there's no... See, the reason why these have to live in line... So I make the distinction between IO and mono IO based. And the IO is basically anything dealing with a file descriptor explicitly. Now the reason I can actually make that distinction is not because it's IO based or not, but specifically because anything IO based uses a callback system. So these non-IO based things that you get in and check on and call, um, do something immediately in return, whereas in the IO stuff is deferred until you get to the select so yeah, the select or, or select. And then if there is an action it does execute it. So I guess those are gonna to have to live in I'm just gonna to have to deal with that. Not much of an issue. I mean, I could split this up once I've refactored to a class, but we'll see if we actually need to do that. Oh, make sure I don't lose my voice either. This is interesting. I think this might be a bug. Is this called? Is it? File, 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 file. I did convert them all to file. Get attribute sock. Is this call?
I'm surprised this actually works. In fact, that might have explained some of the behavior I saw. Get attribute file. because I use that to uncancel everything. So if we look at these, I don't know this one's near the top. Principle remove anything that's a task, append. So we actually need if cancelable. Okay, well, we've got cancelable to sys tasks. Not seeing a remove. Del the first. So we do first here and then we pop off. No, we delete that. And we conditionally delete that, even though that looks like it always executes. This is actually a guard, so it's a bit of an inverted pattern here. Um, so we check reasons to cancel, not check things to continue. Otherwise, like all of this code would be in and if, and I didn't like that, so just we exit early effectively. A slight performance win. Well, is it a slight performance win? No, it isn't. Because the effect is the same, it's just how the code is laid out. So I'm avoiding indentation effectively. Um, but this would also be known as a guard. So don't continue if the guard doesn't equal true. Um, timeout if file unregistered file. So we do use a file in the selector. So if there is a timeout. So with the Python DNS test that failed, I was likely leaking the, the selector things because I wasn't unregistering properly. Although I do want to go off and check, so if we go import selector, uh, selectors, come on, tab complete. Dot e poll. A dot unregistered. Just bring me to here is equal to socket socket. Uh, a dot unregistered Q. Key error. Okay. If file. So I'm surprised this didn't raise a key error. Um, I found some really, really weird and bizarre things in my code that should be triggering bugs, but are not. And that has me deeply concerned. <laughs> Um, I actually found multiple bugs in the DNS code and I suspect it's because I'm not running anything concurrently in that check. So I didn't notice it. It's hard to tell. I'd have to go off and check the implementation. It might be that the code was actually still running concurrently or that it was running in a blocking fashion and I didn't know because there was no concurrency to actually check that against. <coughs> Let's press my voice for a bit and do a bit of programming. I also don't like this pattern, but uh, it works at the moment. I mean, this pattern here is exactly why we want to schedule and unschedule. So let's see how much of a difference we've accumulated. I'm going to go to 307. Good. Check our security check and see if that's actually made a difference because that last tag may not actually work. One error. So, open all the pipe. Okay, given how much context it's giving there, it looks like I might have to do that on the try, not the accept. I 
Let's try no stack weapons. So we can make something that doesn't work. Come that many months. I mean, if you have a look at it, this severity is actually. That's good. Okay. So I need to find the last no sex site. I'm surprised that one didn't trigger. Why didn't that one trigger at all? Six are rays? I don't do anything there. Ah, oh, you know why? Because it's a value app. I only catch something very specific. Okay, so. So let's commit that. And in fact, I am going to tag that one so I can do it later. Uh, what's the next class of things we're going to do? This is a bug. I should have a commit that goes with that, but I'm not going to really bother because it's really only me developing this sort of stuff. Okay, and we're now up to so, Nice, well, I'm making something for the best, but uh, hey, at least we've got everything recorded. So this is another example of where to have a nice thing, it'd be nice to just schedule things. Uh, we want to reroute the get name, which currently maps onto the uh, get post by name syscall, which is actually blocking um, and make it asynchronous by pointing it to DNS Python. The reason I haven't done that is because the scheduling code for that is this part here. As you can see, it's pretty massive. And this is one of those things that I'm still actually torn off about this. Do I make it this always run locally? Or do I actually make it ping remote nodes? And that's actually a difficult one because you don't know how remote the remote node is going to be. And the round trip for sending a message to the remote node may be longer than it takes to do the DNS query locally. So, um, think, 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 think. I might turn that one down a bit more, actually. Think, 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 think. That's better. Uh, so I'm playing around with the mic a bit more. A bit more? Yeah, that seems a bit better. There's a bit of a spot. There's a bit of a sweet spot with all the mics. I don't know why. I've got four different volume controllers on this, and not all of them are linear or exponential. It's there's a mix of the two, so getting everything lined up perfectly is actually kind of difficult. That um, just pumped itself back up. And how's it? And yes. Why does it keep changing back? I have no idea. How about that? Oh, that seems pretty good. Okay. So I think we want to convert this to a class now. Like, we've had a look at the syscalls. Not really much we can take off the critical path anymore. Things sort of where it needs to be. The only problem, the reason why I'm hesitating, this is going to be painful. Very painful. So, I think we're spite the bullet. It's going to be painful regardless of if we're racing it any longer. I don't really want to call it a main, but this calls it a 
but I'm not making it waste this up from later. It's really factoring for us. <laughs> the most annoying thing is we can have another level of indentation. I've already got enough of those at the moment. I've also changed my key bindings. So I'm going to get back to the game. There we go. Just bring it in the I can see Cinobite Buffsec subscribed once again. I know you're trying to uh, advertise your channel, and funny enough, I actually had a look at your channel earlier. Um, very, very briefly. So, uh, that captured my mind. I think this might be the best thing. I'm going to re rebind that indented or indented. So what are we going to pass in? I'm kind of tempted to pass in the initial tasks as part of the call rather than part of the initialization. So let's give that. There we go. Yes, I know you've changed on disk. Yes. But actually, technically, it didn't change on disk. All that updated was the timestamps. In fact, why is my volume? Something is screwing with my volume behind my back. And that is really, really irritating. So I'm going to leave it there. And it's already swapped back. I swear, if that's you, OBS, I'm going to be ever so pissed off. Um, 3D, 3DB, come on, 3DB. No, more like 4. Test, 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 test. No, 5. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Okay, how's that? It's still too high. Now I'm actually not listening, so it's very hard to tell if that's actually adequate or not. Maybe that? Okay. The range on it's actually somewhat problematic, so it's not necessarily just nailing the middle, the midpoint, but the high points and everything. I do have a compressor on the output. Uh, it's one of these things that I need to sit down for two, an hour or two in on and actually get all that sort of so. That isn't streaming fun. So we are going to do a couple of things here. So we need to bring this across. Do we do the select as part of the initialization? I'm going to say yes in this case. Tasks to be part of the class and one of the tasks to be in the I'm just going to come down to this line here and whether or not we actually pop things off or if we just iterate. So if a task instead of runnable tasks, in that case that kind of indicates exactly what I wanted to know, um, which is we don't pop. So we want it to be runnable tasks because that means on every single slice we can see what is going to run and what has run is by just inspecting that one object. 
and then we'll update the new runnable sys tasks and then update runnable files as well. Okay, so that works. Um, I've got no idea why we can go back to a set now. Ah, did you so if we double schedule? So the question is, should this be a list of tasks or should this just be tasks? Let's take one quick look at the API for a set. Uh, I should really close that, shouldn't I? Okay, there is a good set. Sometimes I forget to close these things and they leak, and I restart my iPython session enough that it doesn't really matter, but I just never know. So clear works. Good. Updates. Let's try, what, what's hoping they'd be like clear and update in a single go. What does a discard do? One of the things that does annoy me about Python is that um, the set list and dick stuff, the APIs are subtly different, but there's definitely enough overlap in some of them. They're, if the names are the same, you'd be able to swap them in and out, but you can't because it's just slightly different. Um, so sometimes you want to turn from like a list to a set or something, and you've got to do a lot more work than you should have to be able to do that. And people are complaining like, oh, they're actually fundamentally different things. And it's like, yes, as a whole they are, but <laughs> there's that, that core set um, where the APIs are just so, so, so close that it'd be possible to unify them. Um, and if you're relying on them blowing up uh, to prevent them being mixed up, then you probably want a type system rather than uh, incorrect method names in a long time now. Oh god, I thought I'd never say that. I thought I'd never ever say that, but I guess that's the truth. Bum, 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 bum. Call self. Okay, uh, we were moving these. Um, so I'm going to. They're copied now. We're going to lock them out. Oh, that alt shift tab is a lot harder to hit than I thought it would be. So we don't need new runnable tasks because that's going to be local to the core. And in fact, do I rename call to schedule? I'm very, very, very tempted to because that would remove a loop and then I could pull that loop up to like a run forever. In fact, let's do what a lot of web frameworks do and just call it run once. Well, I normally call it uh, run, run, and then have a run forever. But I want to make it, I want to make it run once. Run 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 I think this is actually where the initial tasks should live. No, actually, it doesn't belong in either. It really does belong in the initialization. What if we, we're going to just break this out at the moment as a reminder. Okay, run forever. Uh, now, this is going to be a bit unfortunate, right? We've run once. Do you do the blocking assist calls at the end? Do you just do the purely security things? So, we actually may end up breaking out a couple other things. Uh, we may break out the cancelable uh, IO calls. 
the time next year, we also might be able to pick up an IO call, an uh, IO bit on the And that should actually simplify our main loops as well too. Make things a little bit more. Is it at its core, if we're trying to reduce the line calls of the main loop, which is now the main loop, is it currently? A couple of concerns. Um, and by concerns, I'm not, not talking about problems, but what it, it cares about. So it has to care about uh, the in intricacies of scheduling call routines and calling call routines. And the calling call routines is actually particularly difficult. Um, cancellation, the IO, and this is all it's in. There's no reason for those to be um, all part mixed together, they're all separate and isolated because this is a functionality with well-defined um, large structures and parts of them. So you can be broken out into other functions. The main reason that they are one function is purely for all its reasons because function calls on Python are particularly expensive. Um, and it makes the code super fast to just move on to the But because I'm using a uh, tracing widget, and with the eventual plans to compile down to C code, that's less of concern because it'll actually remove a lot of that overhead for me. So. Okay, we're going to take a quick pause here and grab some more water. That's completely expensive. Back in a sec. forget how much streaming tires me out. Talking for uh, at length like this is actually very, very difficult for someone operating for a single level, so. Um, let's look at these cancelable sys tasks first. Uh, a list of task union. Okay, so this is going to be have to fix it. We're going to have to fix this one up at some point. And in fact, runnable tasks. Okay. And tasks. Set of tasks. The only reason we have. No, that's wrong. Making backup. That's interesting. Maybe that's why. Okay, so I know what. So I've been trying to tra uh, track down that pause for a long time, and that's the first time I've actually got decent feedback on it. So set of tasks, we have to come down here. Okay, I did comment it out, that's good. Um, let's do this. I'm going to refactor by hand because I'm an idiot. Running tasks dot set. A oh, running task, okay. Um, runnable tasks. Um, do, 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 do. I mean, most people are going to point to their IDE and says it does it for them automatically. That's great, but honestly, this is not too much for sure. And uh, it's amazing how when you're doing this by hand, um, it does allow you to catch some mistakes. I 
and I'm not necessarily talking about mistakes in regards to the reef factor, but just things you didn't notice, like the, the dark hairy corners that people don't look in and clean on a regular basis. Refactoring is a great place to eyeball those manually. Now every time we call self, there is actually also another performance uh, hit because it is effectively dereferencing a pointer. Um, only slightly more, well, I was going to say slightly, only a lot more expensive. Um, so I don't like to do it, and that's why a lot of people are doing high performance code in Python will inline these things. But once again, compilation and tracing and JITs should uh, take care of that. Just means that's going to be a necessity uh, for high performance rather than an optional nice to have. Although my benchmarks have already pointed out that it's it, like you get a 10 tenfold performance increase anyway from doing that, um, which is significant, such that I wouldn't be doing, um, I would not be running it. If that makes sense. Let's close that. Is that open? Okay, we've done these two. We're not doing new runnable tasks because that's defined inline. We just need to worry about tasks next. This is going to produce a lot of false positives, so... The one that really concerns me is um, the cancelable tasks, because that's going to be called a lot. Um, the indirection on task itself is actually not too bad, because I don't expect there to be a lot of process creation and destruction. So. And uh, luckily, once we move that out to a separate function, we can actually inline that. Uh, <laughs> Alright, I, I guess we're going to take the uh, performance hit of a function call in order to be able to do that, so we'll, we'll probably lose everything we gain back then. Ooh. Oh, wow. Really does tie me up. And you know what it actually is? It is actually the talking that does cause me to become very, very tired very, very quickly. I'd hate to see what my O2 levels at at the moment. It's like probably dipping fairly low. So I might just concentrate on breathing for the next couple of minutes, uh, if everyone doesn't mind. If you do, post in chat and I will have even more. But uh, feel free to make yourself known. Alright, now I'd like to say, let's hope that works. But we've actually changed how we call and initialize our code, so I can't actually check this out. I'm going to do a smoke test, and in fact, let's just check the code compiles. Okay. So no syntax errors, so that's a good sign. Um, let's start with the main loop. We're going to refact. We're, we're going to put a lot of effort into keeping this code working, because that's always been traditionally been a problem with my code. I'll go off and develop a feature and break all that stuff and that will require a lot of fixes to get everything back and working again so we're going to go that's great in fact i do need to see what the signature is here uh i've screwed up Uh, schedule initial. Uh, 
变掉。我送。Okay, that's okay. Let's do this. Uh, I didn't have some light, so now you have to do I guess I have to just go and get the last one. And we're back. So we're going to refactor all this. That's a pain in the ass. Oh, well, at least it's a small space. Well, I'm going to take that as a plus. None of them are going to work. That's a Let's do block selects. Hard. Actually, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, really hard to get across just how exhausting this can be. Not for most people, but uh, when you've only got one long. Um. So we're going to have to do start up. Start at 
neighbors blank I really want to copy that that's off. Okay, uh, so what's next? Test MDNS. Bear me in my perfection. I wasn't trying to be perfect with this, it's a lot easier. Call register MDNS. White space, and then in fact, this is going to be an interesting regex, I think. Plus, dollar. No, it cares that. You know what? I've, the mistake I've made. Space. Uh, dollar in all characters. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. That's significantly easier. Okay. Boring grunt work. Once again, refactoring tools would be really, really nice here, but that's just not how I roll. Okay, what are we calling here? Startup is good. So let's do that regex again. We want to replace any spaces with nothing done. Okay, put the slot code there, there, those two. Get that. Get that. All that. And then we're on to ping loop. Oh. Auto indent off, auto indent back on. This was also start app, so we can just replace that directly. Lower added. Do a bulk select there to replace anything more than one character. End with nothing. That's all. Okay, that should be that directory done. No, we've just got time out. That's looking very, very familiar. Actually, that brings up an interesting question. Is not the same? Yes, it was. I've got a feeling that no op then. Well, they're similar, they're not, not identical. Okay. The so one would be uh, one sleep based, one's other is a syscall actually time now. So they're subtly different, which is really irritating in many ways. And they probably don't need to be on the smoke tests either, which is even more annoying. You know, I've kind of changed things to the point where that's not no longer required. Um, start out, start out good. Trim any trailing white space. Uh, 
In fact, I could probably move the test more and test cancel assist calls to the system testing. But we'll worry about that shortly. Oh wow, this one's actually a bit more difficult. These are going to be back to back. Now we come start the clock. Ask. Let's pre strip this. Oh, that works. Uh, no, we want to do that. So pull that person. Ah, so we probably want to change these all to scheduler error. Well, it's same. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, run forever. Yes. Uh, we're going to be repairing the uh, portion called. Good. No return. And paste into the rest of the stuff. And then take this as an opportunity to make the proteins and look at the same as well. So this is an unknown return. I've even refactored this totally manually. I'm not automatically. Maybe not actually. I mean, it would have definitely been easy with an ID with all the same files, but at the same time, you have to like a paste off between them. There's no doubt about it. And I mean, I can open all the files with this, but I just press this. Nice and simple. 
that should be everything. So let's hope we, let's hope that works. Uh, failures are good. Yes, yes. That one's done. So now I just have to fix it. Okay, that's fine. Let's fix up our imports. Just eyeballing this to make sure it looks good. It seems like this having a bit worried. I wish Diff was a bit better in that regard, but I need to make sure that. Yeah, so this is actually wrong. Can't move this one. So that's in the main loop. So that's in um just I should have been able to tell because I've actually got that term specifically highlighted because I do make a time. Scheduler error, scheduler error, another citation error here. You know, I've got some imports in my crew, I think. Yeah, unreferenced man look. Screw myself up that said search and replace. That's fine. Yeah. Luckily, no one's watching. Yes, no, yes. No, yes, no, yes, yes. So we can actually move through this pretty quick. Test DNS. No, yes, no, yes, yes. And because everything on the same structure, I'm very likely to make a mistake. 
Yes. It's actually kind of uh, expected. We've got some stuff we need to pull in. I can't see. I'm just going to see something new to at the same time. I don't have one more screen. I guess at this time of day, the screen is pretty out of the box. Just up to some pretty. And I don't know what to call the other one. Can we call it this schedule? Uh, unscheduled? Yeah, unscheduled. Um, now, the reason why we've got a schedule initially is because what gets past in our AC core box and what entities themselves, and then we transform them into entities. So we have to wrap them up as costs. I don't know if schedule initial is necessarily the right to do that. So we'll deal with that later. So I think I'll probably connect to now more days. Do we have to end this part of this period? Actually, the mode is going to be moved in the schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Merrick will move this. And now I want to just try accept. I will finally. Okay, for I'm only going to be doing a single pass, which makes a lot of sense. So we do need to reset the pass. I was a bit worried that we've got. I was wondering where the ex exception handle is actually, whether that's going to happen in But that means we can also get rid of the level of indentation, which is probably the thing that's going to be annoying in these motions. It's just going to be annoying. Okay, so there we go. So, looking better but not perfect, at least we're not going over this 80 line marker, which is, or 80 character marker, which is there. Now this should be about 130 to 140 characters wide. Um, that's just how wide my laptop is. I'm actually lucky enough to have a laptop that's in the 4 to 3 format, not 16 to 9. And, uh, but it is a bit, it's not 80 characters wide, it's a bit too narrow. Question here like whether or not we actually put that in the final. Uh, if there's an uncaught exception, well, I mean, we catch most of the exceptions in line anyway. So if we get to the point where we do get an uncaught exception, the code that's communicating with this should not try and continue running and then we get that exception. At that point, the main loop is bought and you'd have to restart from scratch, so yeah, that's, that'll be fine. So can we pull out the schedule? Let's take a closer look at the tasks for one of the tasks. We need to copy one of the tasks as we change size. That coin is no longer true. We use set for okay. uh, run task set, that's correct. Syscall is a syscall. I'm going to move that to that. I've probably got a whole lot of stuff I can move out to the top. Um, so this is probably a good opportunity to uh, get this started. Why do I actually pull out arms here? That's actually an interesting question. Because then you have that. And it's actually going to type function on it. I, if I remember correctly, the reason I did that was there were some syscalls that defined ARPs, and they're all IO related syscalls, but not all of them touched that, and that was causing problems. So I'm going to pull that out for you. I can type check on the later day, make sure that's all good. Thank you. 
gut. Let's just wait to get if there's work to be done, otherwise I'll take Once we overall how tasks are done, that will actually disappear. Um, it may actually end up being a new one because we'll just spawn a new instance and we'll make it spawn and run them on concurrently. So, okay. So we do a bit of syntax. Oh, you know what? I thought I had my syntax. Syntax tricks keep on working because that's like okay. that'll end up being very, very good. Um, one of the other nice things about uh, refactoring like this is it actually makes it a lot easier on the type system as well. And we've got well defined entry points. That's just a bit easier to get things cleaner. We only have to consider local state. I, I had a couple of problems with uh, name clashes, and in fact, if you see the I tasks here, um, Part of that was because I was reassigning to the tasks variable multiple times until I had it mutated to the state I wanted. And the type system really doesn't like that, so. Even though the code worked, it's totally fine. Okay, it uh, causes the type checker to, uh, um, not to panic, basically. So th this is why I say the static type systems restrict your choices, and people get really, really offended by that. I don't necessarily mean that is a bad thing, but it is the truth. Um, there, it's like a Venn diagram. There's a subset of programs that are correct and run, but can't be typed, but are not correct by types. And there's another set of programs that are type checked, and then there's an overlap of like programs that work. So just because you don't have types doesn't mean the program is not correct. And people really, really hate it when I point it back now. People get really, really bad, badly offended when you point that out to them. Um, some people just don't believe that's true. Um, but when I wrote this code, that, or when I, finished, when I got to the point with this code about two weeks back when we type checked it, I only had three type errors in the type code. And even then, they were minor. So no. Two of them were where the types were actually So it just goes to show you, you don't necessarily need types to write a correct program. I mean, if you like types, you might as well, but uh, you definitely don't need them, especially for a code base that's only 2,000 lines of code, although that's really the point where you want to start switching over types. Uh, types have definitely been helpful, but they've mainly been important in you know, like unused variables uh, and import warnings so maybe more than anything else. Um, so I'm just bumming around and not doing anything that I should be. And I should actually be making so I'm going to start pulling out the first page. So there's two pieces of code that register tasks. Uh, this is one of them. But we don't set vulnerable tasks here because I want to check this. I'm pretty sure this is just an answer.
Okay, that works. Um... So if we schedule a task, and this is where we have to be really good. Because it's not just about scheduling the task. Scheduling the task is as easy as doing this. Characters. Tasks and move into a dual level um, schedule tasks and state because uh, the object same entity is going to be the state, and then the coroutines running on that entity are going to be the tasks, which will be nice because the tasks are. We'll actually be able to see, see that down a bit and get rid of all the legacy people. So it should be a fairly nice one. Ooh. I can actually think about what any combining schedule does. Scheduling a system or removal, we're creating a new task if it doesn't exist. Otherwise, we're removing it. And if we remove it, it looks like we're not fits. Or do we? Or is that it? Do we have to remove it from the IO selector and the cancel of the process calls? Stuff. Is that the responsibility of the unscheduled? In fact, I actually have to check the behavior. So we've got a dot move the value error that's good. Okay. 
here. What's the difference between discard and remove? I'm just going to discard. Okay, so that just happened. Now it was an exception. Like, why is it not available in this? Ask. Discard's fine, but with... Right, I've already got that available. And if I'm not finding it, it means I've typoed it already. Oh god. Classic. Two pins. Awesome. Okay, so we're unsketching the task. It's still unclear to me exactly what that involves, so I'm just going to have a look at the actual concrete implementation of this. Um, bum, 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 bum. Here we go, task scene. So first let's bookmark it because we're going to be jumping back here a lot. Find tasks. So what are we doing here? We're transforming the address is required. We're checking to see if the node is local or not, and if the node is remote, we forward that onto the, something that's a proxy for the remote node. Otherwise, we try and create the process locally. So that involves transforming it into a task object, which is kind of annoying, and a lot of error handling. Um, looks like it also does a lot of persistence to and from the database. And I'm guessing that persistence is one of the reasons why we want to move that out into another code. And then we reschedule it. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. Um, let's then dive into this stuff and then we start remembering what we're going to do with this. Yeah, okay, we actually unschedule mainly on this, don't we? Move on the tasks in here. So to to actually that brings up an interesting behavior. What happens if B B dot add to So if we do self dot schedule here, new runnable tasks. I might be able to get rid of new runnable tasks in all honesty. So let's restart some music up. So that gives me an idea. I've been streaming for about an hour and 30 minutes. So my playlist is here, yeah, one hour, 29 minutes and 56 seconds. So that's in pretty good pace in there. So I could actually get rid of this local new one of the tasks state because what happens is when we enter our I was gonna say when we enter our four loop we pull from one of our tasks and what we could do is the first thing we could do is zero that and then drop that state and then just use one of our tasks as But is one of the tasks local to this function and only this function? Or is it a global state thing? Like, if I can make it that run one passes a game, like run forever, takes the initial tasks, and then maintains the state local. So, tasks.
like that. One moment. And then this room very quickly gets to uh, do I do in which case this only becomes purely CPU bound. I don't know if you run once and then you run. I therefore don't know if you Hard, hard design for this, please. Very, very hard design for this, please. There we go. Um, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple ways to go with this. And I'm tired, kind of waiting on this. I guess you call it being pure. Because if I'm running once, I don't know necessarily. There's a question about whether or not I block. I don't necessarily want that decision to be are there tasks run like that? There may be cases. Well, you know what? I was going to pull them out anyway. Uh, now it becomes a naming convention. Um, like cancel tasks or do I owe or like run run IO actually or run cancel. Although technically it's probably check cancel. And then that means everything is coordinating and communicating via schedule and schedule. So all updates to the global state are during those calls. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go with that. I knew it was going to be funny. Um, it's, uh, which was going to be some I'm still used to that doing in dancing videos. Now I call them cancelable IO, but they are just timed out as so close. Uh, cool, let's save that again. That didn't feel out of that time, so my syntax is correct. Sophie. People are wondering, I'm just looking at that basically. If that, uh, when I say the file, if that uh, lights up like uh, this one has, then I know there's a syntax error. Uh, well, I know there's a syntax error, I'm not thinking about that syntax error is the one that is available. Okay, so I'm going to just pull up. I think I'm going to pull IO out. So that actually uses a selector. That's going to work. Let's put a warning for ourselves here. We actually rely on scheduling now, so we have to think about it very, very carefully. And the reason for that is we can now think about removing runnable tasks. 
because when, that's now because running tasks is a point of interaction. Um, we can it's now easy to consider how uh, required that is. Um, and when we have to maintain it has to be consistent. So it doesn't need to be consistent in terms of inside a function page, such as a number, but it does have to be consistent between them. And because of that, we can clear the beginning of the function here, and then we'll just update as we go. So yep, yeah, that'll work. Move one of the tasks. This is where it gets tricky. Okay, so self.schedule is really concerned about adding things back in there. So it's about adding uh, things back to the run queue, but not about creating tasks. So we have to work out whether or not we have to assume that role as well, because given that everything is virtual, you should just be able to schedule it and it comes into creation. So, okay, yes, we, we might do that. Okay, that's looking good. Now this is going to be an interesting one. I don't think this belongs here. I kind of feel this actually only belongs in Run Forever. In, if we put it there, we know our unit tests are actually going to run. If we run once, we don't really care. This is what we want to run. We want to run once for the reason. We don't want to run once for the reason. In which case, I can't assume we're going to check that we're going to run once. Check the results are pretty good. The other reason for the run once is just to keep up with everything. So now we're going to run once for the reason. And we have to run stuff intertwined. And we have to run sets of things. 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 Because I'm sure we have the sets of I had some barriers leading in from previous sets of things. But with those initials. Um, so I'd use like .args, for example, on a syscall that didn't have .args, and it wouldn't pick that up. Um, because a variable existed and your type system won't help you there anymore. Okay, so that's good. So now 
I'll get a, a type type error on attribute error. So that's good. I just want to check if it is a type error. No, it's a name error. Okay. So that's good. So if anything, our run once code is actually now more robust than it was. Although this loop here would completely invalidate that. Because it's not just between runs, but also between tasks, so you could slip through. But we've also kind of addressed that with the, the new handling, um, which is this stuff. Yep. Because now what will happen is the function signature won't match and won't blow up, so that's good. So what do we have left in this function? Like what else can we pull out? Um, this, I think. The question is, can we pull out the neighbor code? The reason I'm interested in the neighbor code is we can pull out the neighbor code. If we can pull out the neighbor code, uh, this becomes a very, very simple function. So schedule, schedule a message in the, the task So the messaging should work out if the message needs to go local or not. If it is local, it schedules. If not, it sends it remote. So we can only pull out this code here. That's actually going to change the nature of this code. And you'll see why. But I realized this code is an error. Because if it is going. Oh no, because I changed the destination task, so it is actually correct. So let's select that. So this is an interesting one, right? What is this? So in the concept of tasks, we actually schedule two tasks. Um, we schedule the destination task and the current task that's requesting things. So if I call schedule twice, that should be fine because this should, in theory, what circuit is a local task already exists. So uh, let's, if task not in itself, tasks, we then do that. Yeah, okay. So then if we go... This is becoming a lot cleaner. If node is not self, then we transform the destination node to be a node that proxies the remote, which is good. And then I can just call dot schedule dot schedule. Great, so th this is looking super clean now. Th this is kind of the level, level of complexity, a little bit, a tiny bit more complex than I really wanted because of this neighbor code. Um, I mean, if it looked like that, I'd be super happy. Um, but I can live with this. Uh, oddly enough, is line 388 going to work? Destination task. So it's called a destination task. The big problem we have here. Destination task <coughs> is we don't have a destination. 
don't have this reference. And we ha have to pass in a task. So I have to create a de destination task at some point. So I still have to locate the existing task. So I actually probably want to call self.schedule. But self.schedule takes a task in itself, so I still have to create the task object. Oh wow, that's a real catch 22. That's horrible. So that's going to blow up. Luckily, I can cheat. So we've got this. So we actually don't want to, I don't think we want to schedule a task. I think that's a problem. Um, we want to return a task, that's for sure. But we probably want to schedule. We want to schedule an address. Yeah. Because we know what the address is. And we want to return it. So I still need to which means I can actually now get rid of that indentation which is actually kind of nice because now we can just go to and we know what the address is uh, we know what the address is get me that address and if it blows up because it doesn't exist, then we magically bring it into existence. And I see we still refer to it as a destination task here. So let's clear. Yes, 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 yes. Nice and simple. That's already starting to look plain. And then we do this state restore stuff, which is great. Like I want to put a, I want to delimit this because those are two separate concerns. Um, and I'm going to put one there because it's the last thing we do, basically. Now, because in terms of what, from a logging perspective, we don't update the context, we use the existing context. So we don't need to log who created the task originally. That's just implicit from who calls this. So that's good because we want to be able to track who created what and everything after the fact. That really comes in, comes really handy when we're debugging. So. Do, 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 do. Oh. I'm debating between def do timeout and do timed out. It really is about things that have timed out, so I'm going to put them there. So this man with the standing level room up, you know, which is really, really awesome. Um, but more importantly, now that we know that creates the task, we can do that and we can do that. So it'll schedule the address, and by scheduling that address, it brings an instance in creation, which is a destination task. <coughs> and once we have the destination task, we can actually then enqueue a message on that task, which is a syscall.message. message. Uh, that does mean that task needs to from a task address. And this is where I've mixed types, and it gets really annoying. But that's all that's needed.
So I'm wondering if I can just change this uh, if node is not low. If node is not soft. No, if, if node is not soft, no, I kind of wish my syntax highlighting worked for that, but I'll live with it. Um, I mean, for this, I'm very, very tempted to do something similar. Schedule and create. So, what can I do here? Uh, self dot message what are we messaging we are messaging you give me a you miss me although that, that actually just points a destination to us right and all we're doing is transforming the device We can actually play this out and just make ADDB uh, at node. And in fact, th this is actually wrong because node should be. So we look to see if one exists already, which we shouldn't be doing because that'll be handled by self schedule. So let's pull this out. We're just going to pretend that it always exists. So we've actually found a bug. <laughs> if node is not self. So I, I like the message is not local. Um, ADDR becomes and I actually got this to this. Um, and you know what? It's not even S2S, it's actually no. Because this is a key value store that returns either none or an IP address in the port. Based on the value passing, which of course is business for cash. So, because of that, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. And then, yes, to us, we are receiving a message in its queue, should automatically adjust the pop of this stuff. So, this code's actually gotten simpler, if anything. Um, I would like to remove this code though. And this code comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of my API. Once I clean up all references in my test suite, I think, uh, I should just be returning entity courses. Just call it destination task. Yes. Why is that? An instance. Oh, maybe I can fix this now. That's what I'm thinking. Entities. Um, entities. So I end up creating a couple of entities. Why do I create entities? There should be no cases where I actually create an entity. There should be no entities. So I'm using the entity of proxy which returns an entity of this. And then my main loop should transform into the addresses to entity instances. There should be no usage of multiple entity instances. Because none of the game code should have a direct end direct reference to an API, they should be via proxy objects. Um, 
I'm going to team it to play the move Actually, you know what? I'm going to comment that out. And we're going to annotate that with a tool item. Or, or actually, you know what? This is actually technically a bug. Um, That's actually a pretty nasty bond, but uh, we're now going through the implementation of the same set up. One, two, three, one, two, three, seven lines of code, which is good. Um, this is a lot easier to understand than the tasks. So that's a massive, massive win. And overall, our main loop is now dropped to. Two. Yep. 120 lines. Still a bit long, but I mean, if I removed all of the syscall stuff, uh, we could probably shrink it further. But um, at least the complexity of this is coming down, and we've broken it into its separate parts now. So that I can think about the I/O, the timeouts, and the CPU scheduling and stuff like that. Um, because there is one optimization thing there. Right? So that's if public submits uh, I/O um, to immediately attempt to do that. Uh, and continue on. Um, otherwise, if there's nothing pending, they never block in that And that should actually give us a, um, a bit of a performance boost because transitioning in and out of main is actually And so the main we can break down that now does break on a prior abstraction because we should never do it by her in But because the fallback behavior is to do it in the main loop, uh, that means at least in our test suite, we can disable that behavior. And as long as people are doing everything via the provided syscall objects themselves, uh, there shouldn't be no change in observable behavior. So code should run the same whether or not it's being tested, um, or if they're doing something else. So. Oh, hey, we've got another follow. Uh, Go West 101. I'm seeing a lot of 101s here and I'm getting a bit concerned. <laughs> One sec. What? What? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but top one. It's very, very difficult to talk for long periods of time, so... In fact, even walking the door there puffs me out, so... If it, in this instance, we're blocking that out. So we're looking at scheduling in that case. Uh, let's mark this. Let me quick check. Okay, at least our syntax is not correct. I haven't made any syntax mistakes so far, which is good. Got a lot of type errors, but some of those existed before then, so I don't need to worry about that. Oh, 
kind of love to learn something about the kind of stuff. Uh, commercial experience. This is actually a part of this. I'm not sure what this coach should alert to the main loop or should alert to the calling process. I guess alerting to the calling process doesn't make a lot of sense. Raise type error. I don't even know if that raise is correct. I get the feeling we should just crash the game at this point, in all honesty. But that raises a whole lot of other questions because I mean you could be corrupting the current game's state just by crashing. Everything should be durable and you should well, I, I guess it's one of those things that if someone's made a mistake, the chances of making another mistake are a little bit high. Uh, let's do that. What we can do here. Mismatch dogs. No, let, let's actually do this properly. Um, could we Instance address dot namespace. Okay. I'm kind of happy about this. This has been bothering me for a long time. I couldn't quite work out what to do here. Um, actually, I do need to raise an exception because I don't want to try and schedule a task that's failed. We might not even have a task object, like a task instance fails. Uh, in fact, we won't because it'll fail on this line and task will visit us. So we do have to break early. And I also need to, while I'm at it, again, that's why I bookmark it. So let's return the task because we rely on we we'll rely on that functionality in section part of our type definition. So that's good. Uh, address with namespace, cannot do the thing. And I've got a type of right there. Not restore game. No, that's it's not game state. It's entity state, and that should be on disk state. Does not match class. I want to say class generation, but that's a bit confusing. And current class is not going to work. I don't either. I really should put some error codes on all of these now that I think about it. Because that would be really, really nice for double or matching against documentation.
I think that's the way to go, because some of these records are going to have multiple contexts. There's going to be multiple people consuming these records, uh, developers, uh, users, and administrators, and the information they need is different. So if you're a developer getting this error code here, it'll be contact the developer. For a user getting that error code, it will be file a bug report with, the, with the, whoever's running the game. And if you're a game developer, it will be, hey, you know what, someone's updated your code and you didn't provide a compatibility layer to do the data, data migration, which is exactly what this is. All that means is you've updated your class object to be newer and added or removed fields. Um, and when we've tried to destroy an object, it's been from an older version. And there's a very, very bad message there. There will actually be helpers to help facilitate this. There are classes of version in the future. Uh, that's actually a automatic version uh, without input from the developer is stupidly hard. And I can somewhat detect it by looking at the amount of state we back up and how many fields there are that we back up. But if you delete it from that point at the same time, all of it's wrong. Um, say if you rename something, that would be catastrophic. Uh, the object would be functionally identical, um, but practically, it would be you just go the game. So. Luckily, the Pickle Library has a lot of lessons on data migration, so it's, I, I, I understand what needs to be done. Right? So. That's good. Cool game. Right, so I'm going to take another quick break. Uh, a quick browse around the internet and see what's going on. Find the industry is useless, nothing else or nothing new there. Okay, let's get back to it. Now, I'm going to do this fun. I'm going to run the tests. This should not work. And yeah. No, there's no schedule. Schedule initial five by Initial. Okay, that's easy to fix. It's more that I decided on one temporary API and now I've, I've sort of locked in the final API. Um, so we're getting rid of this and that'll actually be part of one forever. Uh, but while we're at it, we probably need to wire in uh, the time down and do IO. Um, they're not going to work and I'll have to consider what they do. It will make the main loop. Well, actually, are we running it now or are we running it as part of run forever? Self dot.
Now, does schedule remove a task? Yes, it does. In fact, there should be an unscheduled here now that I think about it. Stop iteration. This should unschedule. Self to honorable tasks. Let's have a look at unschedule. Honorable tasks dot remove. Which you know what? I actually don't need unscheduled remove from honorable tasks anymore. Or do I? I do because if I run in the context of IO, but IO should never unschedule a task, that's the only problem. Unregister. Select unregister. Because if something IO, if something triggers IO or cancel, um, it will reschedule the process. So that, that should be sufficient. these ones up. I'm surprised that these didn't get the new runnable task to schedule treatment. Now from memory we pull task from the callback. So Schedule, blocking IO, interrupted error. Now, the problem with interrupted error is I think from memory I actually have to reschedule the event. So, once again, we found another bug. Wait a minute, who gets to the to and handle That should never happen. Oh, this is a hard one. No, because, okay, we, this is not the call to the application, this is the call to the IO. So, if the IO is interrupted, and this is a peculiarity of Unix. If you've got, if you're doing I/O and you get a signal, you, your I/O can be cancelled, and you have to check the error state for that, and then you have to redo the syscall. And from memory, this also causes a whole lot of issues because you don't necessarily know how, how much of the old syscall is completed. Um, I think in the case of a socket, oh, okay, this is going to get complex. It return like it indicates that it's in error, but it also that it wrote bytes, but it can't because that's the same flag, right? A negative one indicates an error, and you check error no. But that same thing is also used to indicate how many bytes are written. So I still don't know what to do here. We're very badly want to this apart. I mean, we shouldn't be getting signals. And given if we do get a signal, the behavior we want is actually to fix it. He did it up to actually exit. I actually think we're catching this. I think it's a mistake to catch this. I think we're just going to do it. So we're just going to do that. Wow, that, that's an annoying, really annoying case. I wonder if that's going to carry over to IOU ring as well. Or if because that's sort of like a deferred and background task if that'll just keep on ha, ha, that'll continue on and we can handle the syscall in the main thread and then just retrieve the results when it's done so mm, this is pretty bad at least i know this for this one we definitely will continue this, this is another this is actually a really, really unique case 
in that if you've got a process in the four, so you've got two processes in the same socket, it's, it's accepting incoming connections. When a new connection comes in, both processes get broken up. Not one, but both. Um, and it's up to them to coordinate which one is actually going to accept the connection. So if you call accept in both processes and just put the way, uh, there are cases where you'll actually get a blocking IO, IO error. Um, as long as the socket's in non-blocking. Uh, if it's in blocking, what'll actually happen is even worse, <laughs> because if they're both uh, processes with asynchronous code, one will just suddenly go from non from executing everything in a non-blocking fashion to blocking. Um, so what we do is we actually just check to see, we set the socket to be non-blocking, so we get notified if there is an error. And if there is a it still has something to actually be accepted because the other process got in the head. Got to the queue before we did. Um, we just go shrug our shoulders and continue on. So that's all that is. Uh, OSR, all the socket stuff is uh, based at one. So it's a we re inject that. Yeah, we don't. And we don't have to do anything on the select this file because we can't. And in fact, I think there is a mistake here. Unregister, unregister, unregister. And also, unregister. Okay. I was going to say, we actually have to manually unregister because I want these all to be single trucks. But I noticed we don't do it here, and that's right, because we want it to continue. But we've decided to only, rather than always unregister, and just only uh, we just unregister once, which means we have to make sure we don't do it in some time. I can do the cancel I guess if we schedule one like, to do the cancel stuff as well. So can we do that? I think we can actually. Schedule something we should just find the schedule points because we can do one extra thing. Let's pull that out. And I think it's the part. If schedule. The question I have here is, can we issue an analysis for a different context? And, um, in, so, in a, can we issue a syscall in a context of the principal system? So, if we remove the principal system, at the moment, um, because the tuple is namespace instance, we find everything by an uncall. Now when we switch to your namespace instance, the mode will we'll just have to do two bits in the name. Okay, so that's fine. And then task should work with this we actively search for the task and then to we won't get two separate tasks in the same task. Your identity will be identity the same as well. But 
little whoops. Also making little barn truck. Yep, okay, so we don't do that there. Uh, if file unregister, on house. I wonder if I can refactor some of this code out as well. And then, fully enough, uh, if I am scheduled, I also have to remove IO. Which is going to be really, really, really fun to detect, I assure you. <laughs> I'm stash this bit so I can do that. Um, working out what the file descriptor is is going to be annoying. Although, I can look at get maps of that task information that way. Might be like might actually be right to do it. I've got At a this is an interesting thing to know. So we're gonna pull this out. Wait, I'm gonna pull all of that out. Self.d schedule task. That should be sufficient. We'll put that there. So this overlaps with that. We have already answered this question. Uh, it does keep state. We have to explicitly register it. So this code is actually necessary. Um, finishing error. We're looking at the scheduling code. Unscheduled. There we go. Actually, this is interesting. I don't think I unscheduled code, but then. I do that. Uh, That's correct. Okay, I don't need to deregister the IO because if it's returned, there's no way for it to actually be in the IO state or a cancel the state. So we're we'll, we'll fine. No task is the task has crashed. Let's save. I don't know if I want to move the schedule. Oh, let's move the yeah, schedule. Let's go. Oh. Okay. It's what? Two and a half, two and a half hours. I'm going to stop there now. It's been a fun run. But I think I want to do some other things. So thanks for joining me. Um, I stream about this time every day. Oh every couple of days, check my schedule if you're interested, and I uh, hope to see you all around. See you later.